it's a bunch of different things. Um, you know, it's kind of a lot of things that are kind of too hard to like, this is so much going on, you know. Um, you know, obviously for us, uh, playing a lot of guys, uh, you know, at the same time, have a full team now and, you know, trying to figure out rhythms and rotations and, and what lineups fit and what lineups don't. Um, you know, lack of ur urgency uh, just from, you know, when we are on the court. Uh, you know, like, like I said, it's, 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 it's not just one thing. You know, it's a bunch of things that, you know, we have our challenges right now, but, uh, you know, got to figure it out eventually, so. How much do you lean on your championship experience through kind of like the ups and flows of the season? Uh, I mean, I, I just – I lean on it every day. Um, it's not even really about leaning on it so much because it's just like who I am as a person, I feel like. Um, you know, that type of mentality and, and just, you know, being around great players is just like kind of molded into me. You know, I try to come in every day, uh, work, uh, focus on the work, uh, bring attention to detail to games and, you know, you know, play, play high effort with uh, energy. Uh, you know, that's what a championship mentality kind of is. So, um, you know, obviously it's, it's tough sometimes because, uh, you know, you may do everything you think you're doing, um, having attention to detail, um, you know, locked in, having energy, but you still lose. Um, but that's the NBA, you know, so. Slippage when you see it, not only in a game, but like over the course of a couple games, do you, do you kind of feel that you start to rhythm in terms of just not being where the standard was when you guys were 10 3? I mean, we've had slippage for 30 something games. So, I mean, I think uh, we started 10 3 and then like 13 and 21. So, you know, that, that slippage has definitely been there. Uh, you know, asking me you know, how to get out of that. Uh, you know, it's a little bit different, a little hard for me to, you know, say, but, you know, everything just starts back from a, a defensive mindset, you know, you look back when we were 10 and three, you know, we play defense, we don't play defense no more. Uh, bottom line, um, obviously you look at a 10 and three and be like, oh, well, they play defense, but also, you know, we're like an unbelievable team under three minutes. You know, so you, know, you can mess up all game, but hey, a game win a shot and you'll be all good and you'll take the win. But, you know, we, we've had our issues even when we were 10 and 3. You know, I remember talking back then and, um, you know, everybody was like, you know, joyful. We're 10 and 3. What's the outlook on this team? Are we contending? I'm like, hey, we, we got to slow down. Like, we're still, we still haven't hit 20 games, 30 games. So, um, that's kind of where we're at. I believe you were with the same draft class as Thomas Bryant. Yeah. LA, yeah. So yep. Um, how, what's your relationship with him like, and what's it been like seeing him back in that <clears throat> Well, I mean, he's a completely different player than what he was in LA. Um, you know, our rookie year, he didn't play at all. Um, you know, he was in the G League a lot. Um, uh, and, you know, Watching him from afar, I think last year before he was hurt, he was playing phenomenal, pretty good basketball. 14-6, got a, got a contract extension, you know, especially for someone that was a second-round pick. Uh, that's big time, you know. And, um, <clears throat> you know, for him, he, he plays with a lot of emotion, uh, a lot of energy. Um, you know, sometimes it may, you know, it's, it's a little bit too much energy when it's like, hey, you need to kind of focus a little bit, you know, within the game, simmer. But uh, he has an uh, interesting dynamic, being able to spread the floor and open up lanes, whether it's for me and Brad, try to get downhill, try to get to the rim. Um, and he can roll, too. He can catch lobs. You can throw it to him. He, he can pass. You know, he's, uh, he's, he's definitely an offensive-oriented five. That's kind of type of that prototypical type that the league wants, so. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. 
It's all depends. Yeah, like, well, I guess uh, that's just kind of personality that's just players like that. Oh, fine. Yeah, I play. I play with anybody. Uh, I mean, I've doesn't matter to me, you know. So, how would you say your relationship with uh, Rui has come? Oh, Rui! Oh, that's my guy, man. He's a, he's a good kid. He's a good dude. Um, you know, just being around him. Obviously, when he's been with the team, has been great. Um, you know, building a little relationship with him and, um, you know, just having an authentic friendship. You know, I think that's, you know, important in, in, in this type of business because there's not really that many authentic relationships. It's a business. At the end of the day, you know, you may be, have a teammate for a year and then they go somewhere else. But, um, yeah, we get along. So, mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we talk basketball, talk life, uh, talk uh, food. I don't know. Talk about a bunch of different things, yeah. Nobu. We talk about Nobu a lot. I mean, that's not, no, but it is. So, yeah. All right, Coos. So we got time for one question from Zoom. We'll take it from Neil. Hey, Coos. I know, you know, the 30 games that you're talking about, the slippage for it's tough with changing rotations, people in protocols, and all that stuff. But what do you think are the immediate near-term small fixes you guys can make to improve the defense? Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know, man. I mean, you can you can keep it simple and, and be generic and say you got to play hard, but playing hard doesn't equivalent to playing good defense. You know, you still have to have this smart intellect to, you know, be at the right rotation, be at the right time. Um, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, maybe coach plays a defensive lineup. I don't know. But, um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is being connected you know, that's one of the areas, um, you know, we need to be more con- connected at. And especially, you know, if you look at teams across the NBA that are great defenses, uh, the Jazz, you look at uh, the Miami Heat, you know, they play great team defense. They're connected. Um, they help one another. They cover for one another. Um, and that's something that we don't necessarily do. So um, I think that's the area of growth that we can have, you know, from starting with communication and then also um, trusting that, you know, if I go help a teammate, that my backside teammate is going to help me. And um, that's the type of mentality you have to have to have a great defense. So what stuck out when you had the chance to really start? Obviously, the three-point line was a problem. Uh, I thought just the – Attention to detail, the urgency. Um, early in the game, I thought, you know, allowed them some open looks that, that really got them going. Uh, you know, just the, uh, the level of physicality, uh, lack of communication. Uh, and one, once the, uh, you saw a couple go in, now, he, now he's shooting into a big basket. Uh, obviously, we tried to ramp it up, and, you know, we weren't very good with our technique and body position, and, you know, we, it was inefficient. Well, it's very frustrating. I mean, I'm, I'm not the only frustrated. They are too. Um, it, it's not just uh, you know on them. Yeah, they they have a big role in it, but uh, I got to help them fix it. So it's uh, you know. We've said since day one, we win together, we lose together. And uh, we're going to just keep, you know, pounding away until we get the desired results. It's, you just can't quit on it and think it's going to fix itself. Uh, so however, however long that takes, um, we'll stick with that. Uh, but it's it's not just them. It's, it's us.
from from the move terms back, I'm just curious how you know your take on the passing out of the high school. Oh, we we play through them quite a bit, you know, in our five out spacing. Um, I think still it's a work in progress. Um, you know, TB is obviously a late addition to you know what we've done. I think he, it, that can change the dynamic a bit. With his ability to shoot to three teams is going to have to honor that, um, which hopefully will open up some cutting. Uh, so we can make plays behind that. I, you know, I think Gaff has gotten better as the season has you know gone along. Struggled a bit early. Teams would pressure him, and you know it just really wasn't you know didn't always play out well. Um, I think he's learning to handle that pressure, um, slow himself down, and he understands you know what we're looking to looking to play out of. Well, I think uh, overlapping it is pick and roll. I mean, it's it's such a dominant part of the game. Um, you know, but then the the one on one. You know, I think it's some of it is understanding personnel. Uh, you know, the, the second part is you know, are we showing a crowd behind it? We feel at times we're leaving guys on an island and asking a guy to single-handedly guard, you know, an elite offensive player. And that's hard enough as it is. Um, so, yeah, we can do a better job at the point. We can do a better job of understanding personnel and taking the strength away. Um, but we also have to do a better job behind it. it. You know, that guy doesn't see open gaps and just has a, uh, you know, a feel for freedom to play, you know, downhill. Can we take some of that away? It's not going to be foolproof, but um, – other teams, we've seen it. They do it to us. You know, can we be in the right spot initially? Uh, can we force, you know, multiple uh, multiple passes and um, then fly around? It's not always going to be perfect. And guys aren't always going to be in the right spots. But do you have that cover mentality where regardless of, you know, where the breakdown occurred, do we keep coming throughout the possession and cover for each other? And going back to Tommy Brock, what you notice from him? Oh, his energy. Uh, he plays with a lot of energy. Uh, he's very passionate. Um, you know, I think it, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be good for him and us uh, to see him get more minutes and get, you know, continue to integrate into what we're trying to do. Uh, defensively, you know, he does a great job of communicating. Uh, right now, he's he's not always in the right spots, but you know, that's something that it's going to take some time. Uh, but his his overall energy and his presence has, has been solid. What was the reason for trying? Oh, we were down 20. Uh, but we talked about it actually, um, you know, even before you know, he was kind of cleared for five on five. Uh, you know, early in the preseason, we talked about, you know, maybe using him as a five at times, downsizing. We, we've done that with Kyle, um, you know, Davis at times in, in small, small sample. But um, just to give us a different look, I just wanted to try it at that point, you know, couldn't, have, couldn't hurt. You know, we're down double digits late in the game and, and just give it a look. Um, and so it's something we're going to continue to play with. You know, at times I think we're going to need it. So this is part of the progression of the team to the point. Potentially. Um, you know, we're not saying that it's, it's going to happen. But, you know, in, in those moments, in those games where the game's out of hand, you're up 20, you're down 20, uh, it gives you an opportunity to kind of play with some lineups, some combinations, uh, move guys around in different spots to see, if, you know, what you like. Everybody who was very influenced came to practice today, like Benny, for example. Yeah, uh, he went through all the non-contact stuff. Uh, both him and TB uh, were set out the contact. All right, Coach, let's transition over to Zoom. We'll start with Ava. Hey, Wes, I got a question about um, Kuz for you. Just in terms of kind of his ability, um, how he stepped up with you guys, but just the different roles that he's played throughout his career, what does it take for a player to be kind of good at adjusting their game that way? Is it as simple as like they're willing to do it or, or they have, you know, they're willing to listen and learn? What's kind of, um, how does that show up in him? Um, I mean, his case is somewhat unique. I think it is some of that, you know, willingness to take on a different role. Uh, some of it's just opportunity. Um, you know, where, where guys are playing a certain role and you know, maybe feel, you know, they, they haven't had an opportunity to showcase some of that because uh, they haven't had to. 
So, you know, this is a new platform and you know, obviously the, you know, absences that we had to endure allowed him even more opportunity um, and he took advantage of it. So I think it is some of the willingness, um, some of the uh, maturation in a young player. You know, I, I still look at him as a young player. He's been around for a while, but um, we've seen growth in him every year. Um, and then to couple that with the opportunity, uh, I think all, the, all, all those things have come in play and tipped in his favor. Has there been anything specific that he's been working on his game or that has kind of you've seen grow just over the course of this short season? Uh, I mean, it's tough to tell with, you know, you know, this is really the only side of coups that I've been, you know, closely associated with. You see a guy, you may you have a, an idea, maybe, you know, correct or incorrect in your head about, you know, what his game is about, but that, you know, that was a different situation. Um, so maybe that's a limited scope. Now that you're around him for, you know, 40 plus games, maybe we're seeing the true essence of who he is as a player. We'll go over to Christos. Uh, in last night's game, did you learn anything about your team that you didn't know it uh, before that the game against the Celtics? I'm sorry, say that first part again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in uh, last night's game against the Celtics, did you learn anything about your uh, your team that you didn't know it before? Um, not necessarily. I think we've seen, you know, some of the lapses that we've had uh, just recently. Um, we've struggled against teams that have switched uh, on us. We, we stagnate at times. Um, and we've played well against it at times. So trying to find that balance and, and, and find that space where we can consistently play at a high level and not fall into, you know, uh, that stagnant situation where it just doesn't play out well. Um, I mean, I give, give Boston credit. They kind of cross-matched at times and were able to switch and keep um, – kind of negate our pick and roll. Uh, then they load up on us and – at times we showed this, you know, this morning, you know, we're essentially guarding ourselves. We pass and stand. It's, you know, you got nine guys watching the ball. So how do we find, you know, ways to keep energy in it, create driving gaps, open up the floor, space correctly, and give ourselves an opportunity to play downhill? You know, you know once we do that, I think the game opens up. You know, we, we had stretches where we generated open looks and they didn't fall for us. So do we have the resolve to go back on the other end and keep defending? Um, and not let the offensive woes kind of weigh us down on the other on the other end. So it's not necessarily unique to Boston, but uh, we've seen some of these stretches and just trying to figure out how to avoid them. And also for you and uh, how, the way that you approach the next game, how big is the desire in the team to get back on the winning column? Well, I think the desire is there. I mean, that's the first step. You know, the, the next step is the action. And we all want things in life. <laughs> Great. All right. So uh, go get it. You know, we have a plan in place. Um, now it's, you know, make it actionable. And I think that's kind of the challenge is it's, it's easy when it's on paper. But, you know, you go out and you start executing it and maybe it doesn't go well. Where do you go from there? Do you kind of go back into uh, trying to do it on our own? Do we stick with it, you know, and, and make sure we see it through? Thank you very much, Coach. We'll go to Wayne. Hey, how you doing, Coach? Uh, with 30 so games left, just curious to know, what are some of your uh, short-term goals before the All-Star break? Well, I want to make sure we get a, a rhythm. You know, I think, you know, we talked about this prior to last night. Right now we have 11 games going into the break. Uh, great opportunity. You know, I think a lot of teams, you know, you get distracted with the break. You start thinking about where I'm going, where, you know, things I want to do finally get a few days off, you can steal some games, you know, but then the flip side is, do we stay the course and kind of, you know, stay locked in, stay committed to how we want to play um, and make up some ground here early, knowing that when you come out of the break, you, you have 24 games and all of a sudden it, it's going to move quickly. So let's not wait, you know, uh, let's have that sense of urgency to come out, uh, attack these last 11 prior to the break uh, with the right mindset. And lastly, Coach, just an observation I made yesterday. Um, although Trez didn't get a lot of playing time, he stayed after and got some shots up. He was still engaged on the bench. What does that say about uh, Trez's, you know, ability to stay locked in even during, you know, this type of, you know, less playing time? Well, I'm sure it's difficult. You know, I, I've made it known to these guys that, 
you know, at times as we shorten rotation, minutes may be reduced. You know, that doesn't mean it reduces your impact. Uh, he's a pro. I, mean, I think he understands that. Um, he's always kept himself ready to play. Uh, and that, and he's, that's shown, you know, over his career, he's, he's been the sixth man of the year. He's been a sixth man of the year runner up. So I think he understands the value he can bring. And it's not always going to be, uh, you know, in the bulk of minutes. But when he's out there, he can impact winning. Uh, and his, to, to his credit, you know, the game got out of hand. We, we tried to uh, play small with Rui at the five. We wanted to see TB get his minutes up a little bit. And uh, it gave other guys opportunity. But that didn't. It doesn't stop him from being engaged in the group and, and trying to help uh, bring those guys along. Thank you, Coach. And last question to Felix. Hello again, Coach Sunself. Good afternoon. And I had a question regarding how the team was playing from behind. And I noticed that when the team was playing from behind, the shots were less consistent. And I was just wondering how much of that you'd attribute to the mental aspect and how you can possibly work on that during the practices. Well, I mean, I don't necessarily have the numbers in front of me that proves your point, but um, I think part of it is the, uh, you know, I look at the defense. Um, and we actually talked about that uh, this morning where I think right now, fourth quarter defense, we were top 10 in the league. Um, and, you know, the, the question goes into, you know, why do we wait? You know, I think we're, you know, middle of the pack first quarter, second and third quarters were bottom third, but, you know, top 10 in the, in the fourth. So whether that's the urgency to get stops because we are playing from behind is that, uh, you know, just, hey, it's, it's winning time. Let's, let's lock in. Um, but just trying to find a way to create some, you know, sustainability where, where we're kind of doing this at a higher level and doing it more for 48. You know, I don't, Can I just I don't add one more question? Oh, sorry. Sure. So I just had more, one more question regarding that. I did, I did take note that the defense was better in the fourth quarter, but I was just wondering if maybe it was a some it had something to do with maybe getting the offense and defense at that juncture of the game in sync. And I apologize for interrupting. I didn't. No, it's that. okay. Um, yeah, that, that that's a an issue. You know, I think when you do get stops, it does give you the opportunity to get out and run. That usually lends to easy offense. Now, you know, obviously we know it's a make or miss league. You can generate all the offense you want, but if you not make shots, um, it is what it is. Some nights, you know, it's just going to be that way. Um, but I do like the fact that we, we're trending in the right direction in the fourth quarter. That's, I think, why we've won so many close games. I think, um, I think we have the second best record behind Phoenix in clutch games. And Phoenix has the best record in the league right now, last I checked. So um, we're doing something right. You just can we find a way to, to, to do it sustainably?